It is summer of 2004. I just graduated high school and getting ready for university. I needed to find a way to pay for college in the U.S. because I didn't have access to enough funding. So I would work from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at one KFC, then drive 35 minutes to the next KFC and work from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then I would go across the street and work at Hollywood Video, a VHS and DVD rental store, and work from 10.30 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. This was a typical summer day for me. I remember one night I was at the gas station, frustrated that once again, I could not afford to fill up my gas tank all the way. And I thought, I don't want to continue living this way. So I made a promise to myself. Janet, you need to do whatever it takes to never have to live from paycheck to paycheck ever again. From that point forward, I worked relentlessly to find ways to work smarter. As a child of Vietnamese refugee parents, growing up in America, I realized I needed people I could trust to help navigate me through the American education and professional system. Just like back when I was in high school and my mom didn't let me go across the state to compete at a business case competition because she didn't understand what that was. So I needed to explain to my high school teacher why he needed to call my mom and convince her to let me go. His advocacy created access for me to do the things that I needed to do, like community service, so that I could prove to college admissions why I was worthy of attending their school. While I didn't know it back then, I later realized that my high school teacher was my first mentor. After that, I sought out mentors throughout university and my professional career. Just like when my university professor pushed me to pursue a degree in information technology, and when my IT internship mentor gave me the courage and helped me build the skills I needed to lead technology projects. Mentors helped me go from living out of my car and serving fried chicken at KFC for seven and a half years. I mean, my hair still smells like fried chicken. To leading the launch of various digital platforms across the globe in collaboration with people here in Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia, and the Americas. So, inspired by what my mentors did for me, and driven by the belief that mentors can change lives, in 2016, I started a nonprofit mentoring program for underserved, underrepresented girls to scale the impact of mentoring around the world. And I used that mentoring network to help me get that nonprofit started and grow it every year. I am so proud when I hear from mentees about the impact the program has had on their growth of knowledge in STEM fields and the growth of their self-confidence and their ability to share with incoming mentors and mentees on how to navigate a mentoring relationship at such a young age is incredible. With a mentor, they can take on the challenges that we face in society today. And let's be real. These days, in the current environment, it is more important than ever for them to have this connection and build resilience. What is mentoring? Mentoring is a relationship developed over time between someone with knowledge and experience and someone with less knowledge and experience in a particular area. We know that 76% of people 
believe mentors are important. But only 37% actually have one. Mentors are important because they help us explore the unimaginable. They can navigate you through the challenges in front of you and the ones that you haven't even seen yet. They can create access and opportunities in the areas you want to develop. Mentors can help bridge the gap between where you are today and where you want to be in the future. So why is it that if mentoring is so important to the majority of people, it's also that a majority of people do not have mentors? I believe it's because we are afraid to ask. We don't know how to get started. And once we've gotten started, we don't know what to do when we're in it. So, with my experience in mentorship and leading a global mentoring program, I'm here to share with you today three key elements on how to get and keep a mentor. Key one, ask for that first meeting. Key two, activate that relationship. Key three, maintain it in a meaningful and sustainable way. As a mentee, you must be in the driver's seat. Being connected to someone is such a privilege and an opportunity. It is up to you on how much you take advantage of that opportunity, how you activate and maintain that relationship. In a way, it's kind of like dating. Imagine someone you have a crush on, or in this case, someone you admire in your career. Your next step is to ask for that first meeting. Now, I know questions may be running through your head like, how do I ask? What if they say no? Oh, the fear of rejection. We've all felt this before, but you need to just ask. Chances are, they had someone in their life who got them to where they are today. And I believe they would be more than happy to help you do the same. So go ahead, reach out and ask for that first meeting. So now that we've gone over the hurdle of asking, let's activate this relationship. So the day is here. It's your first meeting, and your prospective mentor is in front of you. What do you do? Well, the number one recommendation for mentors and mentees in my program is just to get to know each other on a personal level. Ask questions like, what are your hobbies? What did you do last weekend? Let me tell you, they will be ecstatic to share with you about their cross-country skiing adventures in the Swiss Alps, finished off with some tasty fondue in their beautiful chalet. And this will give you a chance to relax a little bit and get a glimpse of who they are. And even better, if you can find commonalities between the both of you so that you can make that special connection. Now, towards the end of that first meeting, no need to ask them to be your mentor right away. Just as in the case of a first date, you typically don't ask the person to be your boyfriend or girlfriend right away, or else you probably won't be seeing them again. So, be patient when it comes to asking that person to be your mentor. Now, Give it time between mentoring sessions. Every three to five weeks is a good cadence because it allows you to work on the things that you two discuss before heading into the next session. And then over the course of the meetings, you can dive deeper into your desired career paths, your talents and potential, and some of your professional vulnerabilities. And remember, as much as you want this person to be your mentor, it is just as important to make sure you observe that they are a good fit for you. So now that we've activated the relationship, 
How do we maintain it in a meaningful and sustainable way? How do you continue to get this person to invest time and energy into you? Well, when your mentor gives you their time, show your appreciation by writing a thank you note after each session. And most importantly, reward your mentor in between sessions with progress updates. You can say, send a simple text like, hey, mentor, when we met a month ago, you suggested that I do X. And since then, I've done A, B, and C, and this is the result. I promise you, there is nothing more rewarding to a mentor than to know that the time that they invested in you is valuable for you. Just as in the case of a healthy relationship, you want to keep your partner happy with positive reinforcements. And some of y'all need to be taking notes. So, the beauty of mentoring is that it is valuable at all stages in our lives. So wherever you're at in your life, you can apply these three key elements on how to get and keep a mentor. Key number one, ask for that first meeting. Key two, activate that mentoring relationship. Key three, maintain it in a meaningful and sustainable way. I'll leave you with words of wisdom my late high school mentor shared in his last letter to me, which I would like to pass on to you. Keep pushing the envelope. Follow your dreams and beware of pitfalls that life tries to hit us with. Life can be hard and it is not always fair, but you have the potential to achieve great things. Things that are worth striving for, not just for yourself, but for society in general. Don't count yourself short. The sky's the limit. Get in that driver's seat. Take control of the future you see for yourself. And bring a mentor along the way to help you get there. Thank you. <laughs>